His Excellency Mr. Gordon Darcy Lelo, Minister of Environment, Conservation and Meteorology of Solomon Islands. Your Excellency, Mr. Gordon Darcy Lelo, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Madam President, Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Madam President, the government and people of Solomon Islands join me in congratulating you on your assumption as President of COP15, and we assure you of our support. Madam President, I speak in support of statement made by Grenada on behalf of Alliance of Small Island States, Lesotho on behalf of least developed countries, and Sudan on behalf of Group of 77, and China. Madam President, the defining moment is here and now. After two years of twists and turns in the negotiations, we have come this far. We began our journey in Bali, negotiated with each other in Poznan, and now here in Copenhagen, that scientific evidence demands decisive action. We must act with a sense of urgency, measured, and in a meaningful and balanced way to significantly reduce emissions of all harmful greenhouse gases. Madam President, as a small island developing state with least developed country status, outcomes of Copenhagen will save our future. We therefore would like to see an ambitious two distinct tracks legally binding agreement on the Kyoto Protocol and the long-term cooperative action. We note that OSIS has presented a legally binding protocol which could be used as a basis for discussing a comprehensive outcome. We continue to encourage a transparent, inclusive party drive approach and our, pro our process between now and Friday must be founded on trust and good faith with a clear defined path to achieve our common goal of sealing the deal. Madam President, the preamble of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change acknowledges that, and I quote, the largest share of historical and, and current global emissions of greenhouse gas has originated in developed countries. It is therefore morally and ethically correct with developed countries' historical responsibility they need to adopt a package that will reduce their collective greenhouse gas by more than 45 percent below 1990 levels by 2020 and 95 percent below 1990 levels by 2050. It is morally and ethically correct to provide new, additional, and predictable funding. This new, additional, and predictable funding must be over and above current ceilings of overseas development assistance. New fast-track financing is welcome, though we would like to see this managed in a sustainable manner within the Convention and Protocol Framework. Madam President, Ocean is pivotal to the existence of humanity in small islands developing states. Ocean is our friend and provider of our daily needs. We live and play with the ocean and it supports our livelihood. With the passage of time, the role of ocean has never diminished for, for, for us. We have taken a number of adaptation and mitigation initiatives, including the Coral Triangle Initiative, which is a six country partnership on safeguarding the world's richest marine ecosystem. Today, Madam, Madam President, I have launched a community-based red, uh, red project which aims to conserve the largest unlocked tropical island in the Pacific. Madam President, the Cuban effect of global warming is declining of coastal and marine resources in small islands developing states. This decline invariably affects the livelihood of humanity in small islands developing states, Ms. Uh, Mr. Uh, Madam President. Can we receive, uh, reverse this decline and preserve humanity on planet Earth? Yes, we can. Madam President, climate change knows no boundaries. We cannot create any weak links within the international system. And Solomon Islands welcome interest shown by those countries operating outside both the frameworks of convention and the protocol to join the global fight against negative effects of climate change. Madam President, we have heard your call for flexibility and compromise in this negotiation. However, we cannot negotiate with science. We are convinced that science should drive our decisions and science and local observations tell us that it is now time to act. To stay alive, we need long-term stabilization of greenhouse gas concentration well below 350 parts per million and global average temperature to be limited to well below 1.5 degrees Celsius. Madam President, we agree, time is up. The window of action is fast closing and the futures of our people, born and unborn, able and disabled, are in our hands. 
We have a unique opportunity here in Copenhagen to, tra to take brave actions, and if we do not, climate change will seal our fate for us. Madam President, to us, survival is not negotiable. Thank you, Madam President.